Hey, we're Ginger and Jeremy Volo, and this is the Hope We Hold podcast. So if you've enjoyed this podcast so far, we would love it if you rate and review the podcast, let us know what you think, and um, yeah, we'd just love to hear any questions or comments that you may have, um, and we hope that you all are doing well. I know this is a very interesting season for all of us, and so we hope that you guys are doing good. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you, as Ginger said, so send in your topics and questions, and also uh, we want to hear from you any stories of hope that you guys want to share. Um, Mm -hmm. Already some of you are sending those in, and honestly, as Ginger and I sit and read them, it's really encouraging uh, to see how you all have found hope in your lives. And um, so, yeah, share those. We love to read that. Okay, so one of the things we are super excited about in this podcast is connecting with you all on a deeper level. Yeah, and today's episode uh, is actually inspired by one of you. Um, One of you reached out to us and asked us to discuss the topic of forgiveness. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah, so a few years ago, um, Jeremy and I, we went to a conference with some friends in Texas, um, and it was a nice gathering of churches and uh, on an Easter Sunday weekend. And do you remember that, Jer? Yeah, I do. It was a few years ago. Yeah, and I think it was um, the first session, the speaker announced his topic, and it was on forgiveness. So all of us were really excited because that's an excellent topic that everyone needs to hear, even you know, um, us as Christians, non-Christians, everyone needs to hear that at least once a year, if not more, (laughs) (laughs) every day. (laughs) Um, But just, you know, even in that, um, it was, I think his title was like something like, should we always forgive? And that's kind of what he went into. I don't know if it was just his title or like that was the topic though. I remember just, should we always forgive? And um, it's an interesting title and definitely something that makes some everyone want to lean into it. Um, because we all have to deal with forgiveness. And so I remember we were all eager to hear what he had to say. Um, Well, to make a long story short, he got it wrong. And in front of something like 900 people in the audience, he got it totally wrong. And so two other speakers afterwards, they had to get up and go and correct him. And it just made it kind of awkward, an awkward time for everyone who was attending. Um, And it was definitely, definitely a moment I will remember. Yeah, and I do remember it. Uh, It was interesting to not only hear his thoughts on the topic of forgiveness, Mm -hmm. but to hear the responses to it, um, both from the two guys that had to stand up and kind of correct him, Mm -hmm. which you never want that to happen if you're a speaker, uh, but also the conversations that it kicked off afterwards. Mm -hmm. Um, but, But it's a relevant topic, and it's a fascinating topic, and as we think about the topic of forgiveness, I think the reason it's relevant is actually really sad. Mm. Uh, this world is fallen and broken. It's sin plagued, which means that people hurt people. Uh, we sin against God and against each other. Yeah, everywhere we look, we see broken relationships around us and hurt feelings. And so forgiveness, it's a huge topic. Yeah. And in in fact, like I said, this topic was submitted to our email. uh, And so thanks for that. Um, And we've been getting some great topics submitted. Uh, Please send in those suggestions. Um, But but I'm not surprised by this topic and that that people were asking about it because it's such a big topic. Mm. Uh, Think of it. Who hasn't been hurt? Yeah. Not a single one of us can say we've never been in a situation where we haven't been hurt by others or if we're honest, where we've hurt others. Mm. And especially in marriage. Um, Babe, marriage is an adjustment, isn't it? You go from being this lone ranger to all of a sudden 24-7 with a single person. You know, you go from date nights where you can dress to the nines and put on your perfect self for an hour and a half uh, to wake up together and see all the blemishes and character flaws day in and day out. Yes, it it was a massive adjustment for me, for sure. Um, Marriage, that is. um, Because... (laughs) I just remember um, moving from Arkansas and from a house that was always had so much hustle and bustle going on, people in and out, um, kind of like a revolving door all the time, to moving into a small apartment 
and on the border, you know, of Mexico and Laredo, Texas, um, and becoming a pastor's wife, moving to a new state, new home, new church, making new friends, and just a completely new environment. So those were all huge adjustments in marriage. Yeah, and even the little things like having to buy one apple instead of... Yeah, I had never bought one apple in my life. We were going shopping for the first time together, and I grabbed a bag so of apples. Even... Yeah, and Jared was like, uh, babe, I think that may be too many apples for us. And I was like... Okay, well, do we but want you didn't apples? even know you could buy them individually. It, I did not even, like, the thought never crossed my mind that you could buy one apple. So we walked around the corner, and we we purchased, you know, just, like, a handful of apples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny. But 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 the adjustments of marriage, right? Yeah. And, and babe, if, you know, I'm not lying here. You're near perfect. So if we, <laughs> if we get to heaven, and I come to discover that you were an angel... Like all of a sudden, it's like your wings pop out. You're like, Jared, I was an angel. I wouldn't be shocked. I honestly wouldn't be shocked. But I do get it. Uh, relationships are complicated and people are sinners. And so forgiveness, mm. it's, it's a huge topic. And the Bible has a ton to say about it. Mm. Um, in fact, you could, you could almost say uh, the, the entire message of the Bible is, is built around forgiveness. So today we want to dive into this a bit. And I'll just kick it off uh, by, by saying that there are really two dimensions to forgiveness that we should understand. Mm -hmm. um, relational forgiveness and dispositional forgiveness. So uh, check this out. Relational forgiveness um, in Luke chapter 17, which is uh, one of the gospel accounts in the New Testament, um, Jesus Christ tells us this. This is Luke 17, verse 3. He says, pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. And so there's a condition clause here. Um, if he repents, forgive him. And even if he sins against you a thousand times and he mm -hmm. repents, you forgive him. Mm -hmm. um, but the reality is, and we'll just get right to it, um, Sometimes people don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean forgive. I mean repent. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. sometimes people don't want to come and ask your forgiveness. And I know we, we have a very close friend. He's a pastor in, in Texas. Um, and he's told his story so many times, and it's incredible, the story. He was, he was a young man who was, who was uh, really abused by actually his older brother. Uh, in really terrible ways growing up, had a really rough childhood, um, and his brother was just really horrific to him. And that created a lot of conflict and struggle for our friend for many years. He's in his uh, upper 30s uh, now. Um, if I got that wrong, please forgive me. <laughs> I, I won't say his name uh, so he doesn't yell at me, but uh, I think he's in his upper 30s. And um, he he's had to wrestle with the 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 really the difficult abuse that his brother gave him. Um, and I'm not talking just about picking on him. I mean abuse, like he abused him. And what's amazing is our friend forgave his brother. Mm. And at one point, and this would have been years after they were out of the home, and now our friend has a family and kids, and he saw his brother who went up to him and tearfully embraced him. And he said, I forgive you. And his brother mm. pushed him away and said, I don't want you to forgive me. I'm not, I'm not asking you to forgive me uh, and was angry about it. Um, but my friend had forgiven his brother. Mm. But you say, wait a second. Jesus told us here in Luke 17 that if he repents, forgive him. But he didn't ask for it. He didn't want you to forgive him. Right. Yeah. And remember the conference speaker I brought up at the start? Yeah. Um, this is where he got it wrong because he took um, a text in Luke that said, essentially, if someone doesn't ask for forgiveness, that you don't need to forgive them. Only forgive if they ask. I mean, imagine raising your children with that kind of an idea. I mean, Felicity only needs to forgive her little sister if she asks for it. I think, I mean, that would seriously create a huge issue. It would create a crazy home. Um, but that's a huge question. Do we forgive even if they don't ask for it? Yeah. 
Yeah, and and that's what we came up with with you know my my friend and his brother. Um, I'm not asking for forgiveness, you know, like uh, so don't don't say you forgive me, mm-hmm. and that's the text in Luke. If he repents, forgive him. So we need to look at a second uh, reality about forgiveness, and that's dispositional forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, we can't force someone to repent and ask forgiveness. Uh, and so that relationship may never be restored. So you see with our friend asking his brother, their relationship may never be restored because his brother's not asking him to forgive him. But we actually have a dispositional responsibility, a responsibility in our heart. Mm-hmm. And so listen to what Jesus says in Mark chapter 11, another gospel account. He says, whenever you stand praying, this is Mark eleven twenty five. Whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone Mm -hmm. so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. So there's a disposition of loving others and being willing to forgive them even if they haven't asked you to forgive them. Yeah, but you know, Jerry, honestly, I think a lot of people would be thinking, how is this possible? Because the things that, you know, people have done against them have been so horrible and so wicked and so painful. And honestly, in the middle of the pain, forgiveness can feel like a foreign thought and an absolute impossibility. Yeah. No, I understand. Um, Especially when someone hurts those who you love. Mm, Yeah. Um, I remember, and I tell this story a lot, babe, but I remember when... It was kind of, I think Felicity was about a year, maybe a year and a few months old. Or and younger. She was the Was she younger? Maybe a year. She was just, she wasn't walking yet. Yeah, she wasn't walking. Yeah. And it was the first time, I mean, she's interacting with kids, and it was the first time that another little child hurt her, like did something to push her down and hurt her. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, it raised in me such a feeling of protection and almost this sort of indignation of where, you know, how dare you hurt my child? Mm-hmm. And it was yeah. it was new for me because it was the first time that that had really happened. And I felt a surge of protection and really taking up an offense for my daughter that I hadn't felt before. Um, you know, and it was kind of the feeling of like, sure, you want to push me down. You want to hurt me. That's fine. But hurt the ones I love. You know, that's when the mother bear comes out. Yeah, that's something I've for sure felt as a mother um, just the ex- instinctive protectiveness. And I think that's a good thing. Um, but what happens, you know, when someone does hurt me and those I love, then how can I forgive? Yeah, it's a good question. And you're right. A lot of people are wrestling with this question. Um, sure, we can forgive someone for cutting us off in rush hour. But what about the real issues? The stuff that isn't so easily forgotten? Mm. Um, And here's how all of it is possible. Here's how genuine forgiveness is actually possible. When we understand the reality that what we've done to sin against our creator is far worse than anything someone could do against us. Mm. So, So really this issue of forgiveness, it comes down to the gospel. Mm. God forgave us. And if he hasn't, if we haven't been forgiven, then we're not going to want to forgive. Mm-hmm. Remember the parable of the unforgiving servant? Mm-hmm. Yes. Jesus, Jesus tells this story in Matthew 18 about a, a, a servant who is called in to his master, the king, um, to pay a debt. And it's uh, an unpayable debt. I mean, it's an astronomical amount of money that he just won't repay. And so the king says, okay, you can't pay it. Well, I'm going to cast you into, into jail. And the, the servant begs the king, um, please, please, I'll, I'll work for it. I'll work for it. And the king, in an act of mercy, goes, you know what? Forget it. You're forgiven. Go, go in peace. You don't owe me anything. And as Jesus is telling the story, you can imagine the people listening. Mm. They're just, you know, it's probably like the, the chills up your spine. You're going, wow, what an amazing moment where this king rightfully could have put his servant into prison, but he's let him go. 
Um, but then Jesus says that when the same servant went out, that he actually found one of his fellow servants who owed him like a hundred denarii, you know, something much less. And instead of forgiving him, he seizes him and he begins to choke him and says, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant falls down and pleads with him, have patience with me, I'll pay you. But instead of forgiving his servant the way the king had forgiven him, he refuses. Mm. And he went out and put him in prison until he should pay the debt, Jesus says. Um, it's an astonishing picture, but it demonstrates what happens when, if we've been forgiven by God, we ought to then forgive others. If, mm. if God's forgiven us for what we've done against him, how could we not forgive those for what they do against us? It reminds me of the Apostle Paul's words um, in Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because we can only forgive if we have been forgiven ourselves. Otherwise, we have a self-righteous attitude. And, you know, we often hear people say, well, I'm not perfect, but I never would have done that. Yeah. You know, in, in my house growing up, um, <laughs> we, we were taught by our parents how to ask forgiveness. Mm. Um, where, you know, we weren't able to blame shift in forgiveness. Um, I really remember it clearly. Our parents wouldn't let us just go, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, kind of like mumble it under your breath. You know, it's like, right. Jeremy, you're going to tell, you know, my brother Chuck or sister Valerie, tell them you're sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. But, but if you hadn't, you know, said that, I wouldn't have. Right. That wasn't allowed. Yeah. That we actually had to ask forgiveness mm. Actually, it wasn't until I kind of left the home or went into my buddy's homes and stuff where I'd see people would call it apologize. We never said apologize. We always said ask forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And what we were taught to do is I would have to ask my brother. I'd say, Chuck, I'm sorry for, I'd have to name the sin. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for being a jerk and calling you that and being selfish. And then these words, um, which what, five words, I think. <laughs> Yeah, five words, five of the hardest. I had to count those. <laughs> I, I actually counted them on my hand. Um, but five of the most humbling words mm -hmm. that I ever had to say then and have to say now. Mm -hmm. you ready for them? Will you please forgive me? Mm -hmm. And it was so, you just don't want to say it. You just want to say, I'm sorry. Because right. you, you can just say sorry, but it doesn't demand a response. You're not actually um, at their mercy. Taking responsibility almost for it. Yeah, the same way, same way in my home. I mean, my parents were very um, intentional about that as well in our home because I think it can be so easy for us, even as kids, you know, like, sorry, but not actually thinking about what we did to hurt someone else. And so when you're able to um, communicate that, even as a child, I think it's so helpful to think through, wow, what did I do? Um, and did I take, you know, Jessa, I was wrong for taking your toy. Like even those words, like just thinking through exactly what I did and will you forgive me? And just asking forgiveness is so important um, because I, true repentance, it requires humility and a genuine desire for restoration. Yeah, it does. And, and it really begins vertically. It begins with repenting toward God, asking his forgiveness, and then it moves horizontally, uh, repenting to others and asking them to forgive us. Mm, yeah, I think it should be noted too that although the forgiving heart, you know, wants reconciliation and peace, we have to recognize that it's not always possible. And we don't always automatically move into trusting someone um, because especially if they're hurting us has been a pattern of that sin, it's, it's really difficult. Um, but forgiveness and trust are not the same thing. I think that's something that we wanna make very clear. Because we can forgive someone and seek restoration with them and still be loving, lovingly cautious and careful, but it's like the trust factor, you know, you, there is a difference there. Yeah. And, and that's where those two dimensions of forgiveness come in, relational and dispositional. Mm -hmm. We are to always forgive everyone, knowing that what we've done against Christ is not nearly as bad as what they've done against us. Mm -hmm. So in humility and love, we forgive them. That's the disposition mm -hmm. of forgiveness. Right. But relationally, there's just the reality that some people, even if they ask forgiveness, perhaps they're not trustworthy. Right. 
they've been living in a pattern of sin, especially when it comes to protecting loved ones. Yes. If someone uh, could potentially harm your children yes. or your spouse, mm -hmm. just because someone says, I'm sorry for that inappropriate behavior, doesn't mean you trust them and say, oh, okay, here, here, you know, you can hang out with my kids again. Um, no, trust needs to be earned. But that lack of trust, where, where it's warranted, should never be coming from a disposition of unforgiveness mm -hmm. and bitterness definitely. and anger. Yes. Um, so there's relational forgiveness, and sometimes that can't be restored if the person doesn't want it restored. They're not asking for forgiveness. Mm. Um, but there are always to be dispositional forgiveness. Most definitely. Um, so this, this should really set us free. Um, we have hope even in our hurts. Um, we don't have to be enslaved to bitterness and anger. Right. I've always thought it quite ironic. You know, the person who hurts you probably never thinks about it. And yet it's you who stews all day and is bothered for years by it. Um, it is, yeah, it's only hurting you and it's dishonoring God. Yeah, but we have, we have hope um, that we can be set free from our refusal to forgive. So remember the gospel, Christian. God forgave you for what you have done to him. How could you not forgive others for what they've done to hurt you? So good. And let me just say this. If you can't forgive, maybe that's because you need to be forgiven. Uh, if you're wrestling with that, mm -hmm. cry out to God uh, to forgive you. And he says he'll forgive all who come to him. Well, guys, like we said at the start, uh, we are so grateful for you guys being involved and listening and for submitting uh, some suggestions. That's what this episode came out today was someone asked us to talk about forgiveness from a biblical perspective. Um, and we're reading your reviews as well. So we appreciate it if you rate and review. We've actually gotten some great ideas for some topics from your reviews. Uh, so send us your thoughts, suggestions. You can email us at contact at hopewehold.com. We are reading those and going through them. Uh, so we encourage that. And thanks for sitting with us today on the Hope We Hold podcast. We trust that you are encouraged. And it is our hope that your hope would be in Christ alone.